Hey guys, Dr. Eric here, your fitness physician and your peptide doc. I'm going to give you part two of my peptide intro. I did the first couple uh, slides or talk of this the other day on a grease board. I just wanted to do a couple slides uh, this style too. I know you can't see my my funny face, but um, you can hear me at least. But it, the, the, uh, the words on the screen are certainly much clearer than what I can write on a grease board because my handwriting is terrible. But hey, that's why I became a doctor, right? So anyway, um, I'm going to hit through a few slides. I'll try to uh, get through the uh, the short presentation. Again, this is an intro to peptides, and then we're going to delve deeper into all of these peptides on future uh, presentations and videos, etc. So uh, I may break this into two parts. So we talked yesterday about, uh, in general, the peptides, how they are naturally occurring peptides, and they are selective signaling molecules, that there are thousands of these around and we're discovering more every day not only can we replicate the exact ones that are found in the body we're actually modifying uh, these as well to make variants of these to improve them to mitigate their side effects and uh, make them work better and safer most of these are extremely safe um, and again try to make them bioidentical and natural to the body right now again there's well over 60 that are fda approved and over at least over 500 probably even more than that based on the last uh International Peptide Society conference I just attended. There's even more uh, available now, um, and I talked about the uh, the composition: two or more amino, amino acids uh, together, usually less than 50 amino acids, linked by an amine group as well as a carboxyl group. They're in all cells. They're part of receptors. They're signaling molecules. Very safe, very specific, uh, potent, and uh, um, they're getting better every day. So, uh, as I mentioned briefly, um, the GLP-1 receptor is the therapeutic target. Uh, was a, it just studied as a therapeutic target in Parkinson's disease. Uh, this is uh, back in 2015, 2016, and it worked so well, uh, they continued development, but they also noticed that uh, patients were losing weight and their blood sugar was getting under control very quickly. So they, uh, of course, Big Pharma latched onto this and uh, started marketing it as an anti-diabetic medication, but it also helps with weight loss, uh, prevention of metabolic syndrome, many other things. Actually, this is a great medicine for many, many things in terms of the the age management arena. We'll, we'll talk about that on future videos. Um, here's a, sh a short, uh, a brief slide talking about some of the peptides that are approved or in active development, uh, different phase one, phase two, phase three trials. Many, 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 as you can see, most of them are related to oncology and meta um, uh, the metabolic arena, but many others, including in cardiovascular space, uh, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and many, many others. You know, we're seeing an explosion now um, because, again, there's better ways uh, to formulate them, stabilize them, make them last longer. Uh, these are very, it's a very complex process and uh, in terms of computational modeling um, and ensuring exact specificity. This is why you have to go through a reputable pharmacy and a physician who knows what they're doing. You, you can't just buy these online. And in future videos, I'll show you they're, they've done studies on these where, where peptides and hormones and other medications are bought just online or on the black market, etc. And they've studied these. And lucky if, if half of them have even what they say they do, not only just their actual product, but the right product free of contaminants and bacteria and infections and uh, minerals and hard metals and things like that. You, you got to be really careful out there. I mean, I know there's a lot of forums and boards that I see and even some that I follow that are constantly just people just taking this in their own hands and playing around with it. Please don't do that. It's very dangerous. Uh, it, it really is. It can have adverse effects and I can go into that on, in the future. And I'm not just saying that to to say, hey, go see a doctor like me, but and truthfully, I, I wouldn't want my parents or my family members uh, doing something like this. You have to you have to get the right stuff, the good stuff through a quality pharmacy, like one of the ones that we use. That these are guys are leaders in the field, you know, Sona, Taylor Made, some of these other companies that are really leaders in the peptide space. You got to get do the right thing, get the right uh, peptide, one that's quality made, and you know you can trust. And then see a doctor who who knows what they're doing, who's trained. Uh, and this is your body and your health is not something to screw around with. Sorry for that tangent, but I just want to focus on that. I want to show you that it's basically a very complex process and you want to get the right peptide. You know, obviously everybody knows about uh, MRSA and uh, bacterial infections that are resistant to antibiotics. So um, talk about how uh, many deaths occur because of this. And again, we, you know, we want to focus, and this is just another arena of, of opportunity. Uh, one of the peptides they're, they're dealing with is antimicrobial peptides. Um, that can take care of infections without all the side effects, et cetera. And this is a huge problem worldwide. And again, one that they are tackling. Um, cancer, another big problem, obviously addressed uh, by, by peptides as well, as well as in the world of orthopedic and dental procedures, been around for some time. And a lot of these peptides, again, have been studied and funded 
in Europe and other countries for years. Um, the EU just uh, funded one particular peptide for, with, I think, a double-digit million dollars, <laughs> like $30 million to study this drug because it's so, been around for so long and has such a good track record. And I'll talk about that later. So the first one I'm going to get to um, is the growth hormone secretagogues, the growth hormone uh, receptor stimulators uh, secretagogues, as well as the uh, uh, GHRPs. Uh, some of the most well-known ones are, uh, at least that we use for the GHRH, RH is the hormone-releasing uh, peptides, CJC-1295, or technically as it's known as MOD GRF-129. It's basically that, I'll show you a slide, I think, on a future video that shows where that comes from. It's basically a splice of the entire growth hormone uh, molecule, and they, again, they're able to modify this to, to eliminate all the side effects of it and make it work better. Uh, so uh, the GHRPs is, are on here as well. Um, GHRHs uh, are the most commonly used, the CJC-1295 and the tessamorelin. There's GHRPs that, like MK677, ipamorelin, uh, GHRP2, and GHRP6, hexarelin as well, which I did not put on this slide. Those are some of the, the last three are a little bit older. So um, these are ones that stimulate your body to produce more growth hormone more effectively in a safer, normal, a pulsatile fashion in a circadian rhythm, not artificially throughout the day. It matches what your body normally makes when it makes it. This is why it can be free of side effects and work even better. Not only this, but we're discovering that there are GHRH and GHRP receptors throughout the body. So it's not just to make more growth hormone. It actually has what we call pleiotropic effects on the body in and of themselves, which I'll get into in a future video. A um, lot of uh, health benefits, uh, quote unquote anti-aging, helping with sleep, uh, healing, tissue repair, uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, many other beneficial functions on the body, um, which can help uh, in terms of metabolism, in terms of tissue healing, anti, you know, prevention of, of many diseases and, uh, and immune and inflammatory processes and things like this. So very exciting field. It works extremely well. My patients love these security goggles. I've used them myself. Um, and again, we'll, we'll get dive into this on, in future videos. Okay, I'm going to break this off and we're going to do part two here shortly, guys. Thanks. Hey guys, Dr. Eric, your fitness physician and your peptide doc here with part two of my peptide intro uh, via Keynote as opposed to me writing on the grease board so you can't read my terrible handwriting. So <laughs> anyway guys, we talked about the growth hormones and gritagogs last time. Um, I'll get into some other uh, others as well, get through them. Um, here's one, uh, some of them are used for weight loss. We mentioned earlier the GLP-1 agonist, amazing medications not only for weight loss but diabetic uh, diabetes control and metabolic syndrome. We mentioned that growth hormone security gogs are used a lot. I've had a lot of success with these. There's a few others like AOD, uh, melanotan 2, and tesofensine. Mod SC is a, a very new one, more for improving mitochondrial function and extending longevity in, in individuals in a very particular way. I have to be very careful with this one, but it uh, can be helpful with improving metabolism and insulin sensitivity, um, similar to these other ones. 5-amino-1-MQ is also a very brand new one, which can improve uh, lipolysis and select tissues and other improvements in the metabolism. Uh, AOD, again, as, as I mentioned as well, also helping with weight loss, but it can also be used with the anti-inflammatory locally uh, in, as an injection with uh, hyaluronic acid for things like knee arthritis and other inflammatory conditions. Um, Melanotan 2 I touched on has a uh, what we call an anticholinergic effect, anti-inflammatory, anti-autoimmune effect. Also has a side benefit of, of tanning, uh, which we'll get into as well. So a lot of these are used uh, singly or in combination, obviously with uh, diet, lifestyle, and exercise, and uh, massive benefit for, for weight loss and overall body recomposition. Uh, anabolism and performance. Again, we talk about the growth hormone security gogs. There are a lot of uh, SARMs that are out there. Once again, this is an arena that uh, you have to be very careful with and where you get them from and how you use them. Very, very specific. Uh, carterine, stenobolic, and ligandrol, or LGD, are ones that have been used successfully. Very, pretty uh, safe overall. Some of these you have to be careful with. You can only use very short term. Uh, similar to, uh, uh, there's a particular one of the, G the GHRPs that you can only use short term because of, there are side effects and things that can happen if used improperly. If you're not following uh, under the good care of a good physician who knows what he's doing. And um, so some of these, um, again, you have to be very careful with. So, uh, and some people use them. A lot of people don't use them because they are a little bit newer and not as long-term studies, but uh, some of them have been proven to be safe. But these are some that can be helpful for, uh, uh, again, with uh, whether you're looking to like bodybuilder style, trying to put on muscle or just improve overall performance. Repair, recover, and injury. Not only with uh, the previous slide with people that are trying to improve uh, performance 
and look better and heal. But uh, athletes, uh, whether professional or not, uh, if you're not if you're if you're injured, you can't perform, you can't work out in the gym, you can't lose weight. Uh, so BPC one five seven is an awesome one. I love it. It's been used for many many years for uh, many many functions. It's a true signaling molecule at tissue repair, healing, healing of the gut, gut issues, people who have inflammatory bowel disease or ulcers or uh, reflux and things of this nature. Uh, many many other functions. Thymus and alpha one more uh, can help with uh, improving immune function. Uh, correcting any autoimmune uh, abnormalities, uh, healing of many, many issues that are, especially those that are uh, where inflammation is the root of the problem, which of course is just about anything. Thymus and beta, TB4, also a great healing peptide for uh, uh, injuries, soft tissues, um, and overall uh, promoting migration of cells uh, to the site of where they're needed. It's one of those ones just like BPC that just does what it's supposed to do, where it's supposed to do it. And again, we'll get into this in, in, in the future, but these are three great ones for repair, recovery, uh, injury, sexual function as well. Melanotan two, uh, we talked about briefly PT 141, uh, for female sexual arousal disorder, as well as men with ED, um, kiss peptin is one that can help boost uh, your own natural gonadotropin releasing hormone, which can in turn raise uh, luteinizing hormone, which in turn raises testosterone. Um, this has actually got a lot of other uh, health benefits on the body as well. These are more of a uh, kind of a side effect that they then notice in terms of improving gonadal function, helping with fertility and things of this nature. DSIP is a, is a sl the delta sleep inducing peptide, which is more for sleep. It's, it's a great um, antioxidant and does other reparative functions in the body as well, but it can also boost LH function and secondarily improve uh, testosterone. Uh, we talked a little bit about healing as well, but some of these other ones are also useful uh, for uh, major autoimmune conditions, uh, toxicity, CRS, mold. Again, we talked about BP, BPC, the thymusins, DSIP also has some healing, and the melanotan 2 is great for because it has anticholinergic, anti-autoimmune uh, uh, functions, can help tremendously with healing of some of these uh, very tough to deal with conditions. Neurologic and nootropic medications such as c -Lank and C-Max are great for improving memory, concentration, focus, uh, more of an anti-anxiety, calming effect. Uh, cerebral lysin is a great one, uh, not only for these, but does many things improving cognitive function. Uh, helping uh, combat some of these uh, neurologic diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, uh, people that are post-stroke or post-CVA, uh, uh, post-stroke, as well as TBI, traumatic brain injuries. Uh, Dihexa is another one in a similar regard, a newer one that can be fantastic for uh, you know, combating uh, neuroinflammation and healing neurologic problems. So some of these, auto and these, these conditions that affect neurologic function, whether they're age-related or injury-related, um, etc., and RG3 and FGL are also newer ones. RG3 is a ginsenicide or, or kind of a derivative of a ginseng, but also uh, one of the pharmacies combines that with NAD uh, for cognitive performance, nootropic effects, as well as combating neuroinflammation. FGL3 uh, is a loop peptide, what we call uh, uh, similar to NCAM, a, a neurocellular adhesion molecule, mimetic, basically. And again, this is one that deserves its own uh, presentation, but uh, and again, I'll get into it later. But a very a, a newer peptide that's uh, massive uh, neurologic effects in terms of improving neurologic recovery, repair, uh, healing neuro neuroinflammation, and helping to grow new, new nerve tissue and helping fight the con the inflammation in the neuro the uh, microglia and other neurologic cells as well. A lot of peptides in the skin and cosmetic space as well. GHK copper is an amazing one for healing tissues, repair, anti-wrinkling. It can improve wrinkling and skin tone, skin texture, um, and actually does a lot of DNA upregulation systemically. This is one that can be used systemically as well as topically. Uh, a really cool peptide, and again, we'll talk about that on future episodes. We talked a little bit about BPC, a uh, great healing peptide, and there's some new ones we'll talk about um, Argyroline will snap eight, and then some of these are combined into a product called Lufazel. Some of these are the uh, the topical uh, new form of uh, basically like the Botox. Uh, it does similar uh, healing and tissue repair and anti-wrinkling and improvement of skin texture without injections. Amazing stuff. So uh, we're going to try these out and, and talk about more about these too. So a lot of things that can do in the skin cosmetic arena as well. In the bottom line, and again, I'll talk I, in future, you know, we want to balance between anabolism and catabolism. We want to repair the body, build the body, but also let it heal through autophagy and other processes. We want to optimize mitochondria and avoid senescence, which is that a, a dead cell. Basically, your cells, again, we'll talk to when they're kind of sitting around um, doing their function, they're dividing, they're actively 
proliferating and doing what they're supposed to be doing and then they get into a quiescent state where they they're just kind of hanging around waiting to, to be activated to do their thing but sometimes because of inflammation injury uh, illness uh, infection things of this nature they can go down the pathway of senescence where they basically are dysfunctional but they won't die your body won't clean it up with autophagy and then they can secrete other inflammatory cytokines and molecules and and spread that and, and cause further inflammation and further dysregulation further mitochondrial dysfunction which is what we don't want again i'll talk about this on a future slide this is what it's all about guys it's, it's very exciting stuff very cool things we're going to get into this more and uh, anyway i just wanted to give a quick intro to these peptides hope you enjoyed and look please tune in and uh, send me any comments and and uh, tune in for the next few rounds we're going to get into these in in the future thanks guys have a great day